Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, we're gonna be looking at some sample questions for SNUSAT, which is the entrance exam for Shiv Nadar University. Today, the subject that we're dealing with is physics. So let's look at some questions of it. Here comes our first question. If mass is m, l is length, t is time, and i is electric current, then the dimensional formula of, of electric resistance r is given by one of the four options. Which of these is the correct one? Well, for that, we would need to find a formula involving the electric resistance r. Now, there are, very, there are many formulas. You can use Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. You can also use other formulas, such as Joule's law of heating, where H equals I square RT. Now, H here represents heat, which is basically a form of energy. I square, I represents, you know, the electric current. R represents the resistance and T represents time. So the formula for resistance will be H over I square T. Now H uh, will have the dimen dimensions of energy. So that would be um, M L squared T power minus two. This has been done uh, in our earlier episode. Now again we have electric current so that's I square and we have time period so that's T. So therefore what we get is ML squared T power minus 2 multiplied with I powered minus 2 multiplied with T powered minus 1. So therefore the dimensional formula of resistance will be mass times L squared times T power minus 3 minus 2 plus minus 2 minus 1 gives us minus 3 and then we have I raised to minus 2 so M L squared T power minus 3 I powered minus 2 is the correct option among the following so which is that option? It is option A. So option A is the correct option for finding out the dimensional formula of electric resistance based on mass, length, time, and electric current. All other options are incorrect because the reason being that there is a difference when it comes to the exponents of T and I. All of these are incorrect. Now let's look at another question. A body is moving at a speed which is nearly 0.3 meters per second. To measure its speed with an accuracy about 1% using a sampling distance of 3 millimeters, the measuring clock should have a least count of the order of 0.1 seconds, 0 0.01 seconds, 0 0.001 seconds, 0 0.001 seconds. So which of these is the correct option? Well for that we'll have to use the formula for speed. Speed equals distance over time. Now what's the speed that we have here? 0 0.3 meters per second. Now that is equal to 3 millimeters which is 3 times 10 raised to minus 3 meters over time in seconds. So therefore the time will be equal to 3 into 10 raised to minus 3 over 3 into 10 raised to minus 1. 3, 3 cancels each other out. We have 10 raised to minus 3 plus 1. So the time period is equal to 10 raised to minus 2 seconds. The time period that we currently have is 10 raised to minus 2 seconds. So for a body to move a, a sampling distance of 3 millimeters at 0.3 meters per second, it would take 10 raised to minus 2 seconds. However, our question is to find the least count. Well, how do we find the least count? Remember, we need to measure its speed with an accuracy about 1%. Now, what does that mean? 
So for us to measure with an accuracy about 1%, that means our least count should be 1% of the time period. <clears throat> so the current time period that we have is Um, so when we look at the least count, which is which uh, the accurate the error that we're looking for is one percent. So delta t over t is one over one hundred. That represents one percent. So now we need to find out delta t, which is well the least count. Now that will be equal to t over 100, and we know t is 10 raised to minus 2 over 100, which is 10 squared. So we have 10 raised to minus 2 minus 2, which gives us 10 raised to minus 4 seconds. So delta t, which is the least count, is equal to 10 raised to minus 4 seconds. Now what does 10 raised to minus 4 mean? That means 1 by... 10,000, which when it comes to decimals, come out, comes out to be 0 0.0001 seconds. So therefore, among the following options, it is clear that option D is the correct option. Now let's move on to our final question. If the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared, and the units of length and time are changed to kilometers and hour respectively, the numerical value of the acceleration due to gravity is A, B, C, or D. So how do we solve this question? Well, we know that the acceleration due to gravity G is equal to 10 meters per second squared. That means we have 10 times one meter over one second squared. So now we have to change our units because that's what the question asks us to do. So meter goes into kilometer, so that means one meter will be one by 1,000 kilometers. Now we have to change second to hours, and one second in hours will be one by 60 times 60. So when it comes to the acceleration due to gravity now, It'll be 10 times 1 over 1,000 times 1 over 60 into 60 squared. Now, 60 times 60, if you do the math, it'll get 3,600. And since uh, the, this fraction is in the denominator, it will be converted. Uh, the denominator of the smaller fraction will go into the numerator. So therefore, what we get is 10 times 3,600 squared over 1,000. Now, usually you can do 3,600 3, squared by itself, but uh, I prefer to shorten it so we can write 10 times 3,600 into 3,600 over 1,000, so we can cancel out two of the zeros for one of the 36s and another zero from one of the 3600s. So what we get is 10 times 360 times 36. Now this seems reasonable, isn't it? So 360 times 36, we can calculate that. 0 times 6 is 0, 6 times 6 is 36, 3 6s are 18, 18 plus 3 is 21. This is a 0, 6 3s are 18, 3 3s are 9, plus 1 gives you 10. Now when you add them up, you, have, you get 0, 6, 9, 2, and 1. So what we have is 10 times 1, 2, 9, 6, 0. So the acceleration due to gravity will be numerically equal to 1, 2, 9, 6, double 0 kilometers per hour. So therefore, the acceleration due to gravity in kilometers per hour is 129600. 
And which of these is equal to 129600? That is option D. So option D is the correct option among the following. The others show 36, 72, and 36. And then, you know, infinite some amount of zeros, which is again incorrect. The correct calculation is to, um, you know, substitute the meters and second square into kilometers and hours squared. So therefore, the value of G in the end will be 129600 kilometers per hour squared. Y squared because this is acceleration. Now that concludes this episode of Snooze App Prep. We hope you found this episode interesting. Uh, for more of our useful and informative content, please subscribe to our channel. You can also like the video and share it to others if you want. And also, you can, all, you can hit the notifications button for getting our latest updates. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.